is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. We have just saw Mike Tannenbaum say the Dolphins screwed up uh, taking Tua and they regret not taking Herbert and it will haunt them for years. And they say the front office has no clue. Uh, isn't he a failed GM? So why are you listening to him, Manuel? And why are you quoting him? I'm just saying, dude, you know, it's just like, why are you worried about what he says? You saw him in action here. It's not like it's something that was better. <laughs> and to be giving up on Tua already, it's like ridiculous. That's fine. I mean, you know, Drew Brees didn't do anything for three years. <laughs> okay. I mean, it, you, you know, players, you got to give them some time. Actually, uh, I, I, I shouldn't even insult Tua with the Drew Brees example. That sounds weird, doesn't it? And I mean this because Tua clearly outplayed Breeze with a bad hip in his first year. <laughs> I mean, let's uh, let's have some fun. Let's uh, let's uh, let's look at the the early Drew Breeze stats. See, it, the problem is that there isn't perspective here, and we want content to just shock people. Uh, because we have to do it that way because that's what's going to get um, eyes on there and, and, and people to download it and panic and all this kind of crap. Let me see here. Okay, there we go. All right, because I'm pretty sure Breeze's stats early in his career were, were really, really bad. 2021, he only played one game, so... Uh, already Drew Brees did better. One TD. Second year, he played 16 games and threw 17 touchdowns and 16 interceptions. So let's 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 do this. Let's have some fun. Measure Drew Brees' second year to to uh, to Tua, and Brees wasn't coming back from a hip surgery. And then his third year was 11 touchdowns and 15 interceptions, and then he took off 27 and seven, and then the rest is Hall of Fame history. But no, let's just overreact. You know, what the hell? It's just perspective, man. Perspective. Okay? Perspective. Uh, if I if I didn't like the kid, I'd tell you I didn't like the kid, and I don't think he can play, but I think he can play. Uh, and I don't overreact with uh, a lot of this stuff going on. They won, right? I, I Last time I checked, they won, right? Okay, good. Now, the kid won more than he lost last year, right? With a bad hip. He threw more touchdowns than he lost, and then, and then interceptions, right? With a bad hip. Okay. Well, he already outplayed Drew Brees in his first year. Let's see. Let's see if he can out, outplay Drew Brees in his second year. And and everybody gave up on Drew Brees. Just happens, man. This is this is nothing new in this league. And to just, you know, cast people aside. And then imagine he then suffers a shoulder injury. He never even had a strong arm coming out of Purdue, but then he suffers the shoulder injury. So, uh, again, you got to kind of uh, slow slow your roll, as they say. And uh, the best thing you do is don't listen to Mike Tannenbaum. It's like when some of you uh, reach out to me and you're, quote, you're quoting Colin Coward. And I laugh because since I've done this for a long time, I can tell the hosts that live off of their producers and that they really aren't watching the games themselves. And that's one of those kind of dudes that lives off of his producers doing all the work and setting everything up for them. And so that, that's why Mike Tannenbaum, are you kidding me? That's where you're going to quote. Don't do that to yourself, my brother. Uh, let's see. Tannenbaum is out of a job. His opinion doesn't matter. His actions got him fired. He's trying to make money by giving uh, what he thinks are hot takes. Exactly. Hawaii Dolphin says Tua and Waddle will be the best dual threat for years to come, period. Uh, I think it's going to be a fantastic combination. I'm with you, man. I'm with you because that kid is going to be so difficult to cover, especially from the slot. Because from the slot, you can use the entire field. Whereas when you're on the outside, obviously you've got to go from the outside in or outside down. From that slot, you can go in multiple directions and obviously up the field. And a guy like Waddle, who can change directions on a dime, 
it, it behooves you to leave him there in the slot and just create havoc. And as I told you yesterday, Waddle is going to force some teams to move one of their boundary corners. If they can play in the slot, they're going to move them inside at times. But that's the beauty of adding Will Fuller this week. Because now you've got two burners that are going to absolutely terrorize the defense. Albert Wilson had his opportunity this past week and didn't do anything with it. So now Will Fuller will take over and we'll see how everything then gets handled from here on out. And it should, in this game, things with Gesicki should open up also. New England uh, did a nice job of bracketing and trying to uh, keep Gesicki out of the out of the mix, and they did exactly that. And Tua was smart enough not to force it into Gesicki. You know, the other night with uh, Derek Carr, it felt like he forced some throws at times where there were several people, you know, uh, around the football, and it was kind of weird that he would keep going to certain people that were clearly covered. At one time, he threw one where there were four people around the football, and you're like, dude, you're, you're, you're playing with fire. And it was crazy. He did it a couple times. And so I give Tua credit that whatever they were doing with Gesicki, he felt like, okay, this is not, this is going to put me in some, uh, in some danger of a turnover. I'm going to stay away from it. And, and listen, that's what Belichick is known. He's going to find a way to take something out. So then the game plan becomes a little easier in their eyes. And listen, it was a good game plan because it was a 17, 16 game. Both teams had a chance to win. Miami was the one that was able to pull it out, which was pretty cool.